call the uh, June 18th school committee meeting to order. Uh, tonight's agenda will follow uh, as will be as follows, excuse me. We'll have a donation uh, from Samantha's Harvest. Uh, we'll then have the teacher recognition uh, section, which is always one of our favorite meetings of the year. Uh, and we will then have the uh, routine business and, and then we'll discuss the superintendent's evaluation. So, uh, Lisa, did you want to come up or I don't know? <laughs> I think I guess oh, over you. there. Um, uh, Lisa Gibbs, Precinct 7. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say um, on behalf of the Board of Directors and Honorary Board and Officers at Samantha's Harvest, we're very pleased to come before you again to make a donation um, to Reading Public Schools. We are um, very proud that this year our board decided to um, donate the lion's share of what we earned in order to um, help the high school realize their vision of a vocational program. So we are buying, um, purchasing a lot of things for the program which I think is outlined in your packet and as well we will be purchasing um, a stove, um, a dishwasher and a hood to go in room 105 where we understand is where the vocational program will um, take place with all the classes and um, we're just very happy and proud to be able to do this um, for this one time this big sum of money set aside for whatever needs the programming um, has so we hope you will accept our donation this evening and probably will be coming we haven't yet purchased those big appliances we'll be doing that um, and coming before you again to make that donation so I don't know if you have any questions thank you yeah we um we are um, I know room 105 and very excited. <laughs> very good. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're more than welcome. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Let me, no. I'll get the most. Move to accept the donation in the amount of $975.22 to be used to support the Crossroads program vocational component. Second. 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 Any other I just have a question. Yes. Is it possible to accept the donation for the stove, the uh, dishwasher, and the hood tonight as well? That way they don't have to come back in July. I, I will amend the motion to include the donation of the stove, the dishwasher, and the hood. Is that all of it? Yep. Great. Okay. All those in favor of the motion? Five zero. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. So we'll uh, move to approve the consent agenda. Is there a second? Second. Any questions? All those in favor? Five zero. Dr. Dari, teacher recognition. Yes, thank you. Um, this is, and I know it's one of the committee's favorite evenings of the year. Um, it's also one of our favorite evenings of the year where we get to celebrate milestones of our, of our dedicated and talented staff. Uh, 79 teachers this year reached, uh, staff members, not just teachers, but staff members reached different milestones, which include uh, for teachers reaching professional teaching status, which happens after three years. Um, and also for milestones of 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. And also we have some retirements this evening as well. So I'm going to turn it over to uh, Jen Bovey, our Human Resources Administrator, who has done an enormous amount of work organizing this evening. And she's going to coordinate the rest of, of this piece of the presentation. So Jen. Thank you. <coughs> 
Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much again for being here. I just want to, uh, again, reiterate what um, John stated about this being such a great night for us to be able to honor um, all of these milestones that you're reaching. Um, it really is a great thing to end the year off with. Um, so with that being said, we're going to get moving along, uh, and we're going to start off with Heather Leonard, the principal for Barrows Elementary School. Thanks, Jen. Um, thank you for letting us join you, school committee, to celebrate these outstanding educators. Um, this year, I, my milestones are all three teachers receiving professional teacher status, which is an awesome thing to bring um, high quality teachers into our district and that they're engaged and connected and excited to stay with us. So um, first is Julie Gilchrist, who's a third grade teacher at Barrows Elementary. Um, next is Bethany Granith, who is a kindergarten teacher at Barrows Elementary, both who are unable to come this evening, but we celebrate their achievement. And third, I'd like to bring up Andrew Hurley, who is a fifth grade teacher at Barrows Elementary achieving professional status tonight. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, and next, we're going to be um, presenting for Wood End Elementary School, and we have uh, Jackie Pelosi. I'm excited to be here for Wood End. Um, we're gonna start off with the 20 years of service. So we have Jane Roberts, our kindergarten teacher. Um, next, we have our professional status. We have two staff members receiving professional status. So Chris Bauer, our PE teacher, could not be here tonight. Um, and we also have Lisa Breed, our school psychologist. Um, and then last, we do have one retirement, um, and I'm so happy that I get to be here because she's part of my team at Wood End. Um, Debbie Leahy is retiring after 40 years as a speech wow. pathologist, 24 of them in Reading Public Schools. Uh, and next, we're going to have Principal Sarah Levesque come up to present for Killam Elementary School. Good evening, everyone. Thank you. Um, I have the privilege of um, honoring three individuals at Killam who have achieved 10 years of service here in the Reading Public Schools. Um, if I'm not mistaken, unfortunately, none of them are able to make it this evening. But we are honoring Nina Balf, who is a current second grade teacher. Uh, Kristen Pegararo, who's a current first grade teacher, and Christine Chuha, who, uh, kindergarten pair educator, excuse me. Three of them, and I'll make sure they receive this award. Thank you. And next, we're going to bring up Principal Julia Hendricks for Birch Meadow Elementary School. Good evening, everybody. Uh, we have four staff members here from Birch Meadow this evening who have reached milestones. Um, Elizabeth Connery has worked for 10 years in the Reading Public Schools as a paraeducator. And then we have Peggy Costello, our school nurse, who has also worked for 10 years in the Reading Public Schools. And I am um, uh, announcing two teachers who have achieved professional teacher status this year in Reading. Carrie Ann Zarico, special educator.
and Leisha Turner, kindergarten teacher. Next, we're going to have Principal Lisa Marie Ippolito come up for um, Joshua Eden Elementary School. Thank you for having us here this evening. Uh, Joshua Eaton has the privilege of having several staff members who have reached milestones in their educational process. So I'd like to start off with um, achieving 10 years uh, with Jessica Cornetta and Elizabeth Hurley. Um, I don't think either one of them are here this evening. But we, I also have the amazing Amy Greco, who is our school secretary. And ten years ago. Next, uh, we have staff member Susie Libby, who is a grade two teacher at Joshua Eaton, who is unable to be here this evening. But congratulations to Susie. We are also fortunate enough to have four staff members to achieve professional teaching status. Um, we Adam DeRosia, who's grade five at Joshua Eaton, Sandy Emery, grade four, Kelly Hardiman, grade five, and with us this evening, in, evening is Brittany Koenig, grade three. We are also sad but very thrilled. We have two retirees that we celebrated um, last week, one with a party, and this morning another one with a breakfast. So we have Maureen Lynch, who um, is retiring at the end of this school year. She's unable to be with us this evening, but congratulations to Maureen. And then, how else could it be? Jill Mayberry, not only is she retiring, but she's also celebrating 30 years. So next, I want to bring up uh, Principal Rochelle Shanklin to pr uh, present for Parker Elementary School. Excuse me, Parker Middle School. <laughs> Made the transition. Transitions, they're always tough. <laughs> um, so at Parker Middle School, we have three teachers who um, have 10 years, are achieving 10 years this year. So we have, with us tonight, we have Julie Merrill. She is... In that 10 years, she has taught sixth grade English, and, she's, and she has also um, been a language-based program teacher. Um, also for 10 years, we have, which they couldn't be with us tonight, I don't believe, um, Brian James, who is an eighth grade English teacher, and um, James Walsh, Jamie Walsh, who is a seventh and eighth grade math teacher. And we have a teacher from Parker Middle School tonight um, celebrating 20 years. So Bridget Roden is our speech and language pathologist. Come on up, Bridget. We have five teachers at Parker who have achieved professional status. Um, we have one of them with us tonight. Um, so Kim Moreau has achieved professional status. Come on up. <laughs> Kim is, um, she is a learning center teacher as well as um, she has been 
doing some long-term leaves in our language-based program as well. Thank you. Also receiving professional status um, this year is Kim Pernazani. She's our school psychologist. Um, Allison Sanchez, who's a grade six language-based program teacher. Nicholas Trapani, who's a seventh and eighth grade math teacher. And Jessica Doherty, who has taught sixth grade English, seventh grade English, and is now currently teaching seventh grade science for us. So, congratulations. <laughs> Next, I want to bring up Principal Sarah Machamp to uh, present for Coolidge Middle School. Thank you. There's a lot to celebrate at Coolidge today, so I'll be up here for a few minutes. Um, I do love this evening, so thank you for having us, and it is a nice bookend for the year, and I just the other day found my clipping from three years ago of our current professional teacher status from their first day when we were at the school committee three years ago, so that was a nice memory, too. Um, so tonight we are celebrating teachers who have been here for 10 years and um, I would like to acknowledge Michael Bernard, Kelsey Finnegan, um, Mary Beth Heatherton and Christian Heisinga who were not able to be here tonight but we want to congratulate all of them. <laughs> One teacher is here tonight, it's Peg Gilbert and we will see her two times so come on, I'm going to make you come up twice. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Your accomplishment. Okay. <laughs> I'll see you again in a minute. Um, reaching professional teacher status, uh, we have with us tonight Daniel Cody, who's a seventh and eighth grade science teacher. Uh, we have I've lost my place. We have Nicole Pendleton, who's with us here tonight. And also receiving professional teacher status, but unable to be here tonight, Eric Castriano. So Nicole, by the way, is um, a, a teacher in our Crossroads program. Um, Eric Castriano, who's a Learning Center teacher. Janelle Cuvey, seventh and eighth grade math and Anna Wentlent, who is our music teacher and whose students are actually about to start a theater production from their theater class across the way at Coolidge, so couldn't be here tonight. Um, but congratulations to all of them as well. And we have two retirees joining us tonight who we were able to celebrate last week in a very special gathering with our staff, and it is very hard to see um, people leave who have made such a tremendous impact in our building and I want to thank them from the bottom of my heart. Um, and I will start with um, Marsha Grant who's our technology integration specialist who's been in the district for 24 years and at Coolidge for 12 years. And uh, I think you're supposed to stay up for a picture so I'm kind of holding on here. <laughs> All right. And then next, um, Peg Gilbert, who has been at Coolidge also for 10 years and is teaching for 41 years as a learning center teacher. Thank you. All right. Okay. Stand behind the podium. <laughs> hey, I want that spot. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Great. Um, and I get the pleasure of also giving a 20-year milestone for Bo Halloran, who is a custodian here at Coolidge, who I don't see him here tonight, but I will have the honor of giving this to him when I see him tomorrow. So thank you very much. Thank you. And next, I'm going to have Director Kelly Boswick come up to present for Rise Preschool. Good evening. Um, I would like to uh, recognize Maureen Delaginas uh, for 10 years of service. Do I have a picture? Yeah, you get a picture. 
<laughs> and um, Mary Sage for um, uh, professional teaching status. And she's wearing her pearls too. And next, I'm going to have uh, Director Carol Carolyn Wilson make her way over here um, to present for Pupil Services. Um, I have one person to recognize, which is Kelly Decato, for 10 years of service. She's been she's currently a team chair, but has also worked as a special ed teacher, and we are very thankful for your service. Next, I would like to welcome up uh, Director Kristen Morello to present for our Food Services Department. Thanks, John. Thank you very much for having us here tonight. Uh, we have several people to honor, um, but only one is here, so we'll do her first. Um, I'd like to congratulate uh, Nancy Learned, who works at Reading Memorial High School in the kitchen, and she has uh, 10 years with us, so congratulations, Nancy. We also have uh, Diane Feely from the Parker Middle School celebrating 10 years, Muriel Hall who um, celebrated 10 years and finished at the Killam, but it's interestingly uh, she had left and then come back and now she retired before the end of the year. Uh, Suzanne Jose from the Parker Middle School also with 10 years, um, and Laura O'Brien from the Killam Elementary School for 10 years. Um, Hillary McCarthy and Michelle McCarthy, not related, both 20 years at the Coolidge Middle School. And my right arm, Jerry Donahue, uh, my secretary, 20 years with the, uh, the school system. Thank you. And next I'm going to have Dr. Doherty come up to present for uh, Reading Memorial High School uh, as well as for our central office. Um, and we have one other facilities member who we're going to recognize. Thank you. Thanks, Jen. So I would like to recognize first our uh, Reading Memorial High School for 10 years, uh, Jennifer Keeney. I don't believe she is here this evening. For 20 years, uh, Amy Diamond. Elena Napoli, Paula Von Yu. For 30 years, Bob Mooney. And I know this person's here because I saw her. Uh, 35 years, Kristen Killian. Those receiving, uh, well, actually, wait a minute, I've got one more here somewhere. Where is it? Oh, there he is. Um, also for 20 years, because he was down in another column, also for 20 years, uh, Joe Levita, who is a school custodian here at, at Reading Memorial High School. <laughs> for professional teacher status, uh, Christina Clausen, Megan Howie, Crystal Leeper, Allie Lynch, Andrew Murphy, and Colleen Griffin Rowland. Colleen is here to see you. Central Office um, 
staff member who has reached the 20 year milestone, and that is our administrative assistant for teaching and learning, Laurie Miller. Thank you, and uh, you know, again, congratulations to uh, those that reach milestones, and we're happy. Our many are still continuing, and and best of luck for those who are retiring. Uh, you earned it, so thank you. Enjoy it. Is anyone else? Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Take a two-minute recess. Meeting back to order, um, so we'll go back. We're a little ahead of schedule, but we'll go back uh, and start with reports. So, if anyone has any reports, uh, Ms. Borowski. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I actually have three, so I'll try to be. Um, I'll try to move quickly, That's but I guess fine. we're ahead of schedule, so yeah, maybe I'll fine. take my time. Um, I wanted to inform the committee, this is a slightly unusual report, but last week I had the opportunity to attend a workshop that was co-hosted by William James College and Teacher 21, Teachers 21 on behavioral health, social emotional learning, and leadership in schools. And the keynote speaker had some information that I found so relevant to the work that we've done over the last couple of years and the work we're doing moving forward that I really did want to share it with the committee and also the administration. So the keynote speaker was Dr. Dr. Robert Franks. He's the president and CEO of Judge Baker Children's Center. Um, and he was really talking about mental health support in school and how we help kids be mentally healthy. 
and he talked about preventative factors, risk factors, and resilience. And he said there's actually a lot a school community can do to improve resilience in our students to help them achieve higher levels of, of mental health. And they included social, I'm sorry, school connectedness. And I was struck by the work we've done to, to see data, data proven improvements in kids being connected to adults in buildings. Like we, we have the data to prove we're doing that work. So that was wonderful to hear. Um, monitoring and improving student attendance. We've heard presentations this year by principals who are doing that work in their schools and seeing data, I keep saying data, but really provable improvement in that area. Active PTOs. I think we can all agree we have very active PTOs in Reading. Um, positive school climates where all the adults in the building, parents, teachers, administrators are pulling together and putting the kids first. Um, the proportion of college bound students having just attended high school graduation. We undoubtedly have a very, very high percentage of kids going on to college. And the last one was policies governing violence, cigarettes and drug use. And I know over the last several years this committee has done a lot of work on policies in collaboration with the Board of Selectmen, with the ARCASA, um, to really make sure that our policies are supporting kids with those issues when they come up. So I just wanted to share that. I, I was really heartened. I sat there going, we're doing that, we're doing that, we're, do we've got, we're really in good shape. I think that the work we've done on social emotional learning in our district has put us ahead of the curve. Um, the statistics on anxiety and depression, particularly for young people, that's happening younger, it's happening at a higher rate. Um, this is the work we can be doing to improve that. So I just wanted to share with the committee that um, if anyone is interested in this topic, I have oodles more information. It was really, really great workshop. My other reports are as follows. Um, the CPAC met, I'm so sorry, I can't find my report. All right, I'll do it from memory. The CPAC met last week. Um, uh, Ms. Wilson, I understand, is going to talk about a few things in terms of some um, personnel changes and the Parker consultation uh, on the language-based learning disability program there. So I'll let her take that. Um, it, was a, it was a very small meeting, um, but uh, Sarah McLaughlin, McLaughlin is committed to continuing her work with the CPAC next year. She's already working on a calendar for next year. Elections will happen next fall, and she's very interested, and I agree with her, I'm very interested in increasing attendance at the meetings, increasing engagement, getting some new leadership on the board. So. Um, there's a lot of positive energy around the CPAC. It was a really productive meeting, and I'm, I'm just really looking forward to next year. They are hoping to have a meeting this summer, so I should be able to report back on that as we get there. And the last update is from the Reading 375th Anniversary Committee. Um, they did have a trivia event very recently that was absolutely fantastic. It was a very effective fundraiser and a lot of fun, and I'm happy to report that they are planning on doing another one this fall. And if you haven't gone, you really should. It is a fun, fun evening. Um, so this group is working over the next year to have these fundraisers, to raise money, to host a series of events in the late spring, early June time frame of 2019. And there's going to be a bunch of events. They definitely want school involvement, so they'll be working with the administration to figure out how each school can celebrate the anniversary of our town. Um, and the final comment on that one is July 3rd, the night of July 3rd, so 4th of July Eve. They're having a movie showing at Memorial Park, so an outdoor movie showing. It'll be a really fun way to kick us to attend that. What's the movie? They either haven't picked it yet or they haven't told me. I don't know which one. It's a secret. It's a secret. Oh. The movie's a secret. Oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. Chair. Linda? Um, I'm, I'm assuming you'll do the it's just the Okay. Um, so I just wanted to let people know that the Reading Embraces Diversity. It's a community action group aimed at promoting communication and understanding across lines of difference. They had a booth at the Friends and Family Day on Saturday, and many families visited. There was a lot of discussion of the escalation of the anti-Semitism expressed through swastikas drawn on town and school buildings as well as the current incident at Parker Middle School that included words, alarming words as well. Red is meeting right now at the UCC Church on the lower level, 25 Woburn Street. In case you're interested, there's an accessible entrance. The goal is to welcome individuals of all abilities to participate in all of its events and activities. Um, the agenda tonight includes a discussion related to Pride Month and a possible response to the alarming anti-Semitic graffiti. You can contact Red via email, readingembracesdiversity at gmail.com or via the Facebook page. Upcoming events include the 
Kindness Rocks Garden, which is a collaborati collaboration with the Reading Public Library. And that's going to be on Thursday, July 26th from 2 to 8 in the studio at the library. So, thank you. What? Um, I would just like to quick report on Reading Friends and Family Day and thank uh, members of the school committee, uh, Mr. Bobbin, uh, Mrs. Borowski, Dr. Doxer, uh, who helped us. I left a little early, so mm -hmm. anyway, we went, we had a table, we had families and students stop by and talk to us. Um, some graduates stopped by, talked to us, so it was really interesting to hear how they're doing, and a bunch of families with preschoolers and uh, it was just uh, great to see the students really excited about the schools uh, that they're going to here in Reading and students that are doing, have graduated and are doing really well and we're sharing a perspective of uh, basically gratitude and thankfulness for the uh, opportunities they had in Reading. So um, I think that was excellent. Appreciate my um, the school committee members. Um, every year we try to support that event and um, sort of some of us take turns um, staffing that table. Um, I realize I was not at the RACASA meeting this last Thursday. RACASA does continue to meet through the summer. Um, I think it's June 28th. Right, we have, we just changed liaison roles and Mrs. Uh, Dr. Doxa will be the liaison for the school committee. I would just like to say though, the work that Jean described at William James, one of the really important um, services and uh, that, that we have through RACASA that's really helping people in our community of all ages is the interface uh, referral service. And it's really something that many other coalitions in Mystic Valley uh, ha are also using and um, we're really happy to be able to support that. So hopefully that's something that as RACASA works through its own budget issues in the coming year, uh, we'll be able to continue to support. Yes. It just occurred to me I should tell the committee and the public to avoid the appearance of a conflict of interest. Until very recently, I was the vice chair of the board of directors of Teachers 21, which co-hosted this seminar. So I just wanted to say that. Yeah. Thanks. Mrs. Wilson. Sure. Um, as Mrs. Borowski mentioned, we did have a CPAC meeting last Monday evening. Um, it was a small meeting. We went through some staffing updates. Um, we talked about the report card working group, which actually just met Thursday to do some work. Um, and we talked about developing a more regular schedule for the CPAC. Um, uh, the proposal is to do it on the nights we don't have school committee, so that it's um, once a month on a Monday night and um, would allow for consistency. And we also discussed that I might um, offer office hours prior to that to have opportunities for parents to meet with me. Um, the other two big announcements is that we do have our program review of the bridge program um, at Parker. Last week we rolled it out, we shared with um, the staff, met with the staff to get their feedback, um, and then we had an open session for parents, um, and then we have now posted it on the Student Services website. The goal would be to more formally present that in the fall. We discussed it at CPAC, and there was agreement from CPAC as well as talking with the administration at Parker that this was just a preliminary review um, with the most relevant stakeholders. And then come the fall, we'll delve more into it with the community and um, others on that. So the other update is that we have hired an assistant director of student services. It will be Allison Wright. Um, Allison has been the team chair at Parker Middle School and she's taken on some additional responsibilities and we're excited to have her transition into that role. So we'll be looking to fill her role um, as team chair at Parker and we do have a couple other vacancies in team chair and as those are filled I'll announce those to the committee. Thank you. Um, Dr. Darty. Thank you. Um, I have one announcement. Uh, we also had a principal hire uh, last week. I'm pleased to announce that Beth Levitt has been appointed as the next principal of the Barrows Elementary School. She's going to begin on July 1st. Uh, Ms. Levitt is currently a grade two teacher and science, technology, engineering curriculum specialist at the E. Ethel Little School uh, in North Reading. 
She has a master's degree in education in moderate special needs from Framingham State College and a Bachelor of Arts in Child Development from Connecticut College. Uh, she also recently completed a very rigorous administrative licensure program, which is fairly new with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts called the PALS, uh, which is a lot of performance-based assessments that they have to do now, as well as 500-hour practicum, which um, is an increase of 200 hours from uh, a few years ago when with the old licensure system. Um, I would like to thank the entire screening committee uh, who was part of that process. We had four very strong finalists. Um, and I also like to thank everyone that was part of the open mic community session and all of the staff uh, site visit and staff open mic session. Um, what was really great about the whole day on the site visit was um, we had different classes of students um, ask questions of the candidates. It, each, we had four different classes, grade three, grade four, ask questions. And I'll tell you, some of those questions were tougher than what the screen committee had asked. Um, so it was, it was really great to see that this is truly a community effort um, in you know, this process. So I, I really appreciate. Uh, and we had a really good uh, attendance at the community open mic as well. So, uh, and I said earlier, Ms. Levitt will begin on July 1st. Have her on board. So thank you. Okay. Uh, I want to do the uh, budget transfer discussion. Yes. So included within the packet is just a quick update from the update that we provided um, on May 4th. So we are still trending in line with where we were. And as we had talked about at that time, we would continue to monitor the balance, especially within administration. So at this time, we are still projecting a surplus. So we would like to request that the school committee approve a transfer out of the administration cost center back into the regular ed cost center, which is where we had originally done the transfer from, um, which we had said if we were not able to fill the positions, we would then transfer the money back. Um, the other item is within the district-wide technology. We have been monitoring all of our revolving accounts, and they all are doing well with the exception of the extracurricular. So we have been monitoring that one this year. And even with the increases in the fees, we have seen a decrease in the student involvement as well as a decrease in the revenues that we brought in from the shows. So we are now meeting monthly with the various people involved in it to look at, see what might be causing some of that. So upon reviewing the balances, we are requesting that we decrease the offset by $20,000 this year. We are able to contain that within the district-wide technology, I mean the district-wide cost center, so we're not asking for any transfer. So we felt comfortable through salary savings to be able to handle the decrease in the offset. Okay, and I'll we will give um, a final update once all the, the books are closed and everything, and that'll be towards the end of the summer. Okay, so I'll have a motion first and then any opening up to any questions. Um, move to approve the transfer of 50000 from the administration cost center to the regular day cost center. Second. 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 Does anyone have any questions? Mr. Bois. Yeah, Gail, thank you for another detailed update on, uh, on our budget. And there are those who may ask about these transfers and have questions about it. You know, it seems that every three to four months we adjust or uh, move funds between cost centers. So this is one where we, I think we had moved money into administrative before and now we're moving some back. Could you just give us a little context? Just people, you know, looking at this from the public may wonder, well, why are we doing this? I, I will point out, as your memo says in the packet, that it's, it's a very, it's less than half a percent. Um, of the total budget, but it's it's still money largely from public funds, and so we want to yep. be respectful of uh, the public's interest in understanding why we're making these transfers. Absolutely. So earlier in the year, we had requested a transfer as we were starting to look for additional help in the central office for the school business assistant position. We were unable to find somebody on a temporary basis to come in and fill those hours, and at the time we had said if we were not able to either increase hours within the staff or bring somebody in that we would then transfer the money back into regular education, which is where we had requested the transfer from. 
so we were not able to fill it. I am happy to report that we did hire somebody for next year for the position that was approved in the budget, and he is starting July 9th, so we're very excited for that. So we felt it was prudent to return the money back and use it for our curriculum purchases and technology purchases since we had originally requested it out of regular education. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there any other questions? All those in favor? Six zero. Thank you. The other one is a second. Um, move, uh, I'll read the motion first. Move to reduce the budgeted offset from the extracurricular revolving account by twenty thousand to thirty thousand from the original fifty thousand budget. Is there a second? A second. Second. Gail, do you have anything? So for that one, as I mentioned, we have been monitoring the accounts. This was the first year that we had the increase in the fees. We also had looked at some of the shows and originally had felt comfortable with the dollar amounts. We did see um, overall student fees went down this year, so I am meeting with two individuals tomorrow to go through the actual student participation as well as the costs of the shows and the revenue coming in as we're looking to plan for next year. So we are, um, and we do have meetings set up monthly going into next school year to closely monitor to see what the various causes and effects may be, whether it's different shows, timing of shows, um, whether the increase in the fees had a larger impact than we thought it would. So we have regular scheduled meetings going forward. What's also for these is we need to look at the ending balance in the revolving account because often for these there is the front loading of expenses before we start to receive the student fees. So we're not able to bring the revolving account down to a zero balance because they have to do a lot of the props and the royalties and expenses that come in before the student fees come in. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? All those in favor of the motion? 6-0. Thank you. Thank you. So we're we're still ahead, about 10 minutes ahead of schedule, or 15 minutes ahead of schedule. Mm -hmm. We can either keep rolling on here <coughs> or uh, take a recess. So well, I have a question, actually. Yes. I'm wondering if the superintendent could say something. I know there's an active investigation going on, but I wonder if you could say a little something about what happened to Parker. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't Mrs. hear the last Mrs. part. Mrs. Docks is asking if you could comment on the incident at Parker. Um, um, she understands there's an active investigation going on, but wondered if you could comment. So, um, I actually captured this in my newsletter this week. Yeah. And Ms. Shanklin also captured it in her newsletter and um, an email that went out uh, right after the incident happened. Mm -hmm. So there was some graffiti that was found, anti-Semitic graffiti, which included a SWAT sticker and a phrase um, that was a very uh, disparaging phrase um, at Parker Middle School located in the front vestibule uh, on the brick walls. It was in pencil. Uh, the incident was immediately reported to police. The graffiti was removed. Um, once the facility department was notified, which was shortly thereafter. Uh, the, my understanding is that the investigation has concluded at this point. Uh, what is very discouraging, and, I, and I'm, I'm also Franklin, who was very upset, <clears throat> as well as the staff and the students were upset that this happened, is that both middle schools, and, and Parker as well, have done a significant amount of work this year on um, the importance of inclusion and acceptance and the meaning of hateful symbols and phrases. Um, and they will continue to do that work. Uh, some of the things that they've done this year includes the Core Values Program, World of Different Student Leaders, Advisory Lessons, Student-Led Assemblies, Dr. Ornstein has come to visit. 
uh, Parker as well as Coolidge in the high school and the curriculum-based activities that they do during their advisory period with facing history and ourselves. Um, after each graffiti incident, uh, the principals and teachers have spoken to the students about the graffiti and emphasized their role and power in fostering a safe and inclusive environment. Although the events continue, we have to continue to do the work. We cannot uh, give up, we cannot change the message, um, because we have to provide a safe and inclusive environment for all of our students, and that's the bottom line. And that is gonna continue to be the focus. What I did put in my newsletter, and I know that Ms. Shanklin did as well, is that the Anti-Defamation League, who we have worked very closely with on this incident as well as other incidents, um, has a whole series of resources on their webpage um, on how parents can use these as well as current events that are happening all over our country and world. Um, and the link is in, in the newsletter that I sent out this week. It's on the adl.org webpage. Um, and there are several there are several resources there. Um, obviously, we're not happy with this. Last year, we ended the year with a graffiti incident, and this year we are as well. So it's it's a little um, discouraging and disappointing with all the work and the emphasis that we've had on it this year that this continues. But we certainly will not give up. Thank you. Yes. Just a uh, question, Dr. Cardi. The uh, buildings, as are all, our, our, all of our buildings, are public use buildings, community use buildings. Yes. So um, I, you mentioned, you know, links on our web page, but I was wondering if uh, there's an appropriate place on the town website through the HRAC, potentially that um, those same links should be posted, and perhaps I, mean, I am actually the new liaison to HRAC. So um, I can certainly so I think, yeah, it, it, bring that up to them. Yeah. That those, those same links, obviously, because given that these are public use, we'd like to get this information out to as many people as possible who come in our buildings. Yes. Um, I actually have two, mo two more questions. I really appreciate the research that you've done, Dr. Doherty, reaching out to the ADL. When I last spoke to you, you had been looking through Southern Poverty Law Center and also talking to others about how to best handle the situation. Um, and I know that you had discussions with the ADL about why specifics about the phrase were not disclosed. And I was wondering if you could just explain, because that's one of the questions that I've been asked. Why is it that they recommend you not specifically talk about or publish the words that were on the, um, it, with the graffiti? In all the research that I've, that I've done on the types of press releases that have been sent on different uh, hate graffiti and symbols across not only Massachusetts but across the country, um, they, they've, I've never seen any that get into these specific words. And I'm also talking about uh, racist, graffiti, any type. Um, the ADL, we had a conversation with them on Friday. They frown upon it. Um, I know that if Ms. Shanklin has been asked directly, she has in full transparency told uh, people that have asked what, what it said in terms of parents communicating with her. So it's not that we're not being transparent. We're just um, we're taking the guidance and advice from the, the anti-defamation league. Yes. And my, my other question um, was you've done um, a really nice job communicating. Ms. Shanklin wrote right away to the Parker community and you included these resources in our newsletter, which I really appreciated. Um, and I appreciate that Mrs. Webb talked about um, ATRAC. Is, um, was there a conscious decision not to send it out to the town, or is there um, is there rationale around that? We we did we sent it we sent it to the newsletter on Sunday. The newsletter to the schools. You, you mean to the entire community? Yeah, just asking about that. That's one of the questions. That we, we did not. No, we did not send it. Okay, I was just wondering what the 
at, at what point um, does something like this I'll, I'll tell we've you we've regularly communicated the graffiti incidents to our school community. It's been done on a regular basis. Well, and the police. All right. I'd certainly bring that to each track. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, at this point, I'd like to have public comment. If there is any on for something that's not on the agenda for tonight, Mr. Corm, did you have? Thank you, Mr. Robinson. I do have two things that are not on the agenda for tonight. Um, the first was um, a message that was shared with me, um, or a, a post that was from the fifth grade principal, or the elementary school principals, the saying that the uh, Borndale trips are not going to be happening next year, uh, that they're looking for an alternative. It was just a few years ago that my current freshman was, in fact, in front of the school committee telling what a great time she had at that uh, at the first year, the first trip when Birch Meadow went uh, initiating that program. So I certainly hope that the, uh, the principals are able to find a good replacement. Yes. And I'll note that you know, it was really something about that, the overnight trip, but the, the longer, not just trying to cram as much into the school day, um, but that Morndale trip really gave a number of opportunities that aren't available in other, situ uh, other circumstances. Uh, the other um, agenda. Thing that's not on the agenda for tonight. Uh, I wanted to ask the school committee to revisit the question of the assistant sec principal secretary position at the high school, which in the even in the restored budget after the override is still being eliminated. Um, and the, the fallout for that is that the um, secretary for the guidance department is being bumped out of her position. We had a lot of um, passionate support for that, that person. Um, by a number of students who came up and spoke very eloquently at the, during the budget discussions. Um, and I, you know, I don't specifically know who's coming in, and I'm sure she would be uh, you know, a good replacement. But I also want to talk about um, how the assistant principal secretary is also, just as a position, is an important position, particularly next year as we have a new principal coming on. I think we'll need perhaps a little more support for that person in the first year. Um, that having extra secretaries in the administration's office at, at the high school uh, would be very important, at least for that first year. And we can consider it. Um, I also noticed, you know, with the budget transfers that we saw at a regular day, if we're perhaps able to pre those for next year, we might find a little bit of. If you move the thirty thousand or the fifty thousand back, the projection would show eighty thousand um, dollars left over projected at the end of this year. If you can pre-purchase and you know open that up to help support the assistant principal secretary position. I also, as I walked in uh, to the library here, there's a couple of maps with the admissions of the, the current senior class into various students. And um, you know, talking with the guidance director at the high school mentioned that you know, she really felt that the current secretary of the guidance department was, was very helpful in, in managing all of the, the things that are specific, not just to you know, secretary, OK, answer the phone or, or respond to letters, but specifically guidance-related activities that you know, it takes a while to get up to speed on Naviance, on how the colleges really want this information, or the transcripts, or you know, whatever inf communication and information. And it would reflect very well on our students if we have good communication back from someone experienced in that position. Uh, so I hope that, um, that you will be able to consider that and speak only a little bit selfishly here and that my daughter will be a senior next year and going through <laughs> a lot of those procedures, uh, process of uh, admission involving the guidance department. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, we'll uh, move into the uh, superintendent evalu evaluation, uh, and I'm going to ask uh, Mrs. Borowski to uh, go over her uh, uh, summer summative evaluation of, of all the committee members. Uh, Absolutely. Different evaluations. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Would you mind if I adjusted my chair to this end, just so I have a little no. bit better visibility? Great. Thank you. space for this. This would be the literal worst <laughs> all facing one way. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the purpose for tonight is to go through the annual school committee evaluation of the superintendent. 
before I start that, I thought it would be wise if there's anybody um, listening to this who's unfamiliar with how superintendent evaluation works in Massachusetts to very briefly go over the process. And then I also um, was charged with the task of reading each of our individual evaluations and combining them as uh, our chair said into one summative evaluation. And I feel like I owe it to my colleagues and certainly to Dr. Doherty to explain how I approach that. So I'll talk about those two and then we'll dive in. Is that okay? Uh, and, and you know, I guess I just say we appreciate that you read through all of our documents. Thank you. Thank you. No worries. Um, so Dr. Doherty began this process um, over a month ago when he shared with the committee and the public the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education evaluation form. Um, that form is used across the Commonwealth by school committees to evaluate superintendents. So what we do in Reading is very consistent with what's done across the state. Um, we each individually and independently complete an evaluation, which is then published. It's in the packet tonight. It's on the website. It's fully transparent. Any member of the community can see what each committee member, um, how we evaluated the superintendent. However, Desi recognizes, and it is true, that Dr. Doherty cannot possibly answer to six different managers. It would be impossible, and it would also be organizationally dysfunctional. There has to be some mechanism to create one evaluation that represents the committee's overall um, feelings. So our process this year was the same as it's been for several years. One school committee member was appointed, in this case me, to take the six um, evaluations, read them, and put them into one summative evaluation. So. Anyone who's read this is familiar with it. There's sort of two sections to the evaluation tool. There's the goals, so a list of Dr. Doherty's three-year goals and um, rankings of his progress towards achieving those goals. And then there are four areas of, I call them professional attributes. The document has a different name. Performance standard indicators. I like professional attributes, I'll say that. Um, but these are the qualities that the state has determined are um, the qualities that successful and highly functioning superintendents have. And the school committee members each individually ranked Dr. Doherty. And um, if anyone has seen these, have we all provided significant comments as well. So my process on the rankings is actually straightforward and very easy, and I owe a debt of gratitude to Mrs. Webb. Uh, up until last year, this was her job on the committee. I took it over last year. Um, and she explained to me her process, which I followed faithfully. I think it's the right process. She assigned a numerical value to each ranking. So let's say there's an attribute or a goal, and there are four categories. Needs improvement, unsatisfactory needs improvement, met, exceeded. You just give it a number, one, two, three, four, create an Excel spreadsheet, name of each school committee member, uh, whatever the num numerical value of that ranking is divided by the number of school committee members, that's the average. So the rankings is actually very straightforward. There's really no subjectivity in it. Um, so that was the approach I used last year and this year. So thank you, Mrs. Webb, for sharing that thought with me. Um, I will at this point say that one school committee member, Ms. Van Den Acker, who is our junior, most junior member, opted to not provide rankings. She provided very significant comments in her evaluation, but because of her newness to the committee made the determination she wouldn't do rankings. So the rankings were all calculated by dividing by five, the five members who um, gave rankings. The comments are a harder nut to crack. Um, there were significant comments um, really covering the gamut. What I attempted to do, um, and I did put a lot of effort into it, was try to suss out what were the common themes, what were the things that emerged again and again. So I tried um, in the summative evaluation to do that. Um, so that was my process. Maybe before I move forward, any questions on the process, concerns? I just wanted to add, Ms. Borowski, that um, what a part of the um, individual process that we each have is that we each um, do the evaluation based on the information um, yes. that's provided by Dr. Darty and that that on um, our personal experience, and we each individually meet with Dr. Darty. And I think this is a very um, valuable part of our process as is my experience in the private sector doing performance review, the most important part is having that discussion. And so it does enable each of us to have that opportunity to have that discussion um, with Dr. Doherty, provide the feedback, and uh, we do that. And then subsequent to that meeting, we would finalize um, our own individual assessment. And then we individually send that to Ms. Sporowski and Dr. Doherty and no other member of the committee. So um, I just want to emphasize that none of us, none, no single member of the committee sees any other committee member's evaluation until this packet is published by Mrs. Engelson. 
So, um, which is at the exact same that. time it's posted to the website. Yes. We get it at the same time the public gets it. So at exactly the same, and that's been our process for as many years as um, I can recall, and having been on the committee when we started this process with um, Superintendent Scatini. Thank you, Mrs. Swift. Um, Dr. Doherty, I'd like to commend you on what is a very strong performance evaluation. Uh, I'll start with the goals. Um, your goals for this year were um, professional practice student learning goals, and then district improvement goals, which you broke down into closing the achievement gap, literacy, math practices, and social emotional learning. Um, across the board, the committee feels that you've made significant progress, and many of us cited some real headwinds this year and some real challenges. So to make significant progress towards your goals in the environment we've been in the last couple of years is impressive. Um, indicators. Standard one is instruction. Um, the school committee ranked you proficient overall in every indicator except for one where you were um, ranked exemplary. Um, the committee was particularly impressed with curriculum improvements. Uh, the plan to hire two curriculum coordinators, our strong partnership with our CASA and the middle school advisory model. Um, and I do want to point out that the exemplary rating was on data informed decision making. Many of us have been very impressed over the last year with the presentations from a variety of administrators and yourself across the district at how data rich the presentations were. So um, that earned an exemplary mark and, um, and an overall rating of proficient. Uh, in this category, several members of the committee did express deep concerns about the findings of the Office of the Civil Rights that um, IEPs many uh, several years ago were not completely complied with. So we do want to take this opportunity to express that our expectation is 100% compliance with IEPs and all federal mandates and laws moving forward. Um, and uh, there was also a desire to see pacing charts and curriculum maps and have some more clarity around when we can expect to see those in the future. Standard number two is management and operations. In this category, um, Dr. Doherty, you earned proficient rankings right down the board for all of the um, for all of the categories, uh, creating a safe uh, a safe environment for students, human resource management, scheduling and management information systems, your understanding of law, ethics, and policies, and fiscal systems. Um, the school committee commends you for your strong hiring practices and outcomes. And I'll pause here and say you just announced a new principal at Barrows. Several of us were at the open mic night. And you're exactly right when you say you brought forward, the screening committee brought forward five very strong candidates. I was there and I was utterly impressed by the quality of candidates. And that is not the first time I've had that experience. So our hiring process is really um, exemplary. And you deserve a lot of credit for developing it and maintaining it. Um, the development of intervention blocks in all of our schools, creating time for more individualized instruction, whether it's um, students with um, special needs or gaps that need specialized instruction, or students who need enrichment and to be pushed a little bit. So creating that time for that individualized education is very much appreciated. Um, and it was unanimous. All six of us specifically mentioned your leadership during the last budget process. The development of two distinct budgets. Um, one was a balanced budget in the event that an override did not pass, and one was the reconstruction budget budget in the event that the override did pass. Um, again, there was unanimity on the committee that your clarity of budget presentation, the clarity around the outcome of either vote, uh, and your collaboration with the municipal leadership and town leadership across the board uh, was a critical part of the recipe that led us to um, fiscal stability for the next several years. Performance standard number three, family and community engagement. Um, there was unanimous agreement that your visibility and one-way communication efforts, blog posts, newsletter, emails, visibility at events, presentations to this committee and in other venues are excellent. We appreciate your commitment to office hours, to providing opportunities for the public to meet with you and ask questions, provide feedback and raise concerns. Um, we really see no room for improvement in this area. Um, and several mentioned that they're um, happy to see the pride survey that includes feedback from parents as well as staff. Um, and several committee members, there was um, some challenge around kindergarten placement this year, but many, can, uh, many committee members felt that the final res resolution was educationally appropriate, reflected a very collaborative approach. So um, a lot of us were very satisfied with the outcome there. That being said, this is the area the committee would like to see you focus on most in the upcoming year. Um, we'd like to see a higher level of sensitivity and interaction with parents in the community, um, approaching emotional and difficult topics with a little more equanimity, um, especially when things
things become emotional and heightened. Um, there was concern about the miscommunication, the initial miscommunication around kindergarten placement and a desire to ensure that that type of miscommunication not happen again so we don't have to fix it. Um, and several of us expressed concern about the general social media environment and recognized that that is creating some um, additional challenges to quality communication. So that, that came up in several of the evaluations. Uh, and finally, on professional culture, um, there was only one area for needs improvement here, and that was managing conflict. And that gets to some of what I was talking about before. I'd really like to see um, that be an area of focus for you moving forward. In all other areas, except for one, you were rated proficient. Um, you earn high marks for establishing a professional culture in our district. Your work ethic is unparalleled. I believe all six of us said that. Um, I literally do not think you could work harder. Uh, and that is not true in most districts. We're very lucky to have someone who works as hard as you do at, at your job. And your commitment to your, our students is evident in everything that you do. It's clear that you enjoy working directly with students, and that's something we very much appreciate. And your love of education is abundantly clear. Um, you were described by several members of the committee as receptive to feedback, reflective, and open to change. Uh, the only thing I will add is the one area that you weren't ranked proficient in, in this one, as I mentioned earlier, was in continuous learning where you were ranked exemplary. Um, you really do lead by example in the area of continuous learning and encouraging and modeling for your staff how to always be growing and always be learning. Um, to sum up, um, we want to thank you for your critical leadership role during the budget process, the important curriculum updates and improvement across the district, exemplary hiring processes, um, sustained increase in the percentage of students accessing higher level math, your leadership in social emotional learning. Um, I reported out earlier on a seminar I was at and it was just abundantly clear that we we're ahead of the curve on this because of work you initiated four years ago. Thoughtful, thorough response to the disturbing bias incidents that we've experienced over the last year. Your commitment to data-informed decision-making and the professional development you offer for staff. Um, we certainly hope that you can use this evaluation as an opportunity for reflection and growth. That's what our intention is. Um, and I, I think that's all. I know I went through that kind of fast, but I believe, Dr. Doherty, we've all had time to read it. So um, do you have any questions or comments for me or the committee? I, I'll have some, I'll, just, I'll make a statement at the end. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So thank you, Jean. I know it's a lot of, thank you. A lot of work uh, and a lot of information to pull together and appreciate. Uh, of course. So, you know, the committee has had an opportunity, obviously, in, in a written evaluation. Uh, does anyone have to, to and, and has also met with the superintendent, does anyone have an additional comments they'd like to make? Uh, regarding their evaluation, the, did you have? I I just want to. I'm not going to read my what I had prepared, but I just wanted to say on my um, evaluation sheet, evaluation sheet for some reason my overall view didn't show. I think maybe because I had highlighted it in yellow, so it was supposed to be significant progress. Okay. On my sheet, but I won't go into the rest. Thank you. You did such a good job. Thank Anyone you. Anyone else? Yes, Mr. Paul. So I, I have some comment for the superintendent, and then I have a, I'll stop there, and then I have a comment yeah. for the committee since we don't get to deliberate before tonight. So I, after reading other people's comments, I have some questions just for the, our, our committee. Um, for the superintendent, one thing I did want to highlight is is that you know, Jean did make a, a summative remark about what I'll call demeanor, uh, Dr. Darty. And this is an area where, uh, in my evaluation last year, I had specifically noted uh, as a development uh, area handling conflict and some personal experiences I had had. I wanted to say for the committee and for the superintendent, I've seen marked improvement in this area in personal interactions with the superintendent this year. I, I haven't stopped having disagreements with the superintendent, but I feel that they've been handled very professionally this year, and I want to thank him for that. Um, I feel that you know we've both been able to express our perspectives. I feel I learned a lot from those discussions, Dr. Darty. And I want to commend you in interactions with me uh, this past year in an area, and I noted that in, in one line in my, in my um, comments. Um, and I think if it, if, if it can improve in, in any one area, I think it can you know, improve universally that this is, is a very um, valuable data point for us to build off of and that you know, I know there's a variety of, of stakeholders in the school, so I appreciate your continued commitment to do, do for everyone what I saw you do in, in our interactions this year, and I really appreciated that. So that's my comment on that. Okay. Anyone else? 
Dr. Doherty, do you have something? Yes, thank you. Uh, first of all, Ms. Borowski, thank you very much for the work that you did. It, having in continuing to do many, many evaluations <laughs> using this process, I know how time consuming it can be. <clears throat> I also want to thank the committee, and I think I've told each of you individually when we had our meetings that I would not have wanted to do my evaluation this year. So I really appreciate the time and effort that um, each of you have put into this and that you took it very seriously and the thoroughness that you put into it. I really appreciate that. Um, I agree with what Ms. Borowski said in terms that this should be looked upon as a growth process and I will take all of the areas um, that I need to strengthen and um, there were several that I listed here including um, the, the OCR complaints, the curriculum maps, the two-way communication, um, we need to, I need to do a better job with the kindergarten communication next year, um, working with parents on sensitive and emotional topics, uh, and managing conflict. Those were the pieces that I took away from the, the commonalities among um, all of the evaluations when I, when I went through them. So um, I certainly will incorporate those as part of my individual goals next year with the committee. Um, and you know, come up with ways to improve in those areas. I, I also, just to give a brief, this has probably been the most unusual year that I've had as an educator. Um, there have been highs and there have been lows, but there really hasn't been a lot of in-betweens. Um, and it just seems like that's how this year has gone. Um, from the graffiti incidents that began uh, last spring and continued through the summer, uh, to, which is a low, uh, to the passing of the override, which is a high. Um, there has been, there has been a lot of things that have happened in this district this year, and um, obviously, we've we've done everything we can to to keep keep everybody moving in the right direction and moving forward. But I I do want to give a special thank you to the people that have been working as a team with me um, and staff. I want to thank all of our building principals who have been, um, I know were very visible during the budget process uh, at our meetings. Um, I want to thank uh, Carolyn Wilson, our Director of Student Services, who I know has got a very difficult job, and certainly Gail Dowd for all the work that she did during the budget process this year with the two budgets um, that, that you mentioned. Um, and on top of that, all of the other little jobs that we've had to do for various reasons, whether someone's been out for a while or, or whatever the case may be, we've, we've really had to pick up the pieces. So I just want to give a special thank you to all of the people that have worked with me um, and to continue our move our district forward, even with all of these challenging times that we have faced. Um, and you know, you, you mentioned that this is a very positive evaluation. You can't do this by yourself. Uh, you, need, you need strong people, dedicated people, hardworking people to make this happen. Um, and I, I show my appreciation to those people. Thank you. Yes, Ms. Perot. I, I thank you for that feedback. And um, I, I think that your approach in specifically highlighting the areas of, that you would like to work on developing is really modeling for everyone how to take that. So I appreciate that. But I do want to emphasize the level of proficiency is highly rigorous in the state of Massachusetts. It's a very solid, solid review. And it's clear to me that you continue to have the support and appreciation of this committee. So it's maybe a nicer place to end on. And I appreciate your receptiveness. This is what? Yeah. Um, I'm going to put the motion on the table for us. Uh, move to approve the superintendent's end of cycle summative evaluation report for the 2017 2018 school year. Any discussion? Any? Yes. I want to talk to the committee about it. Any? Should we second? Can you just second? Yeah. Sorry, I thought you seconded. You, you went like second. This. Sure. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I had some, after reading the reviews, I had a few comments for, for the committee, which I can't make other than an open meeting. So I, yeah. I'll just a few points. I have a few points about the structure of the goals that I wanted for thinking about the future, because I wrote this evaluation with respect to the goals. I had some differences with the committee on the goals. I voted against the goals, and, but I, I voted, I, I evaluated based on the goals in, in spite of that. Um, 
So I wanted to speak to that first. There's some areas where I think we as a committee are lacking in information for, and that we may want to seek more information in the future. It just wasn't available to us uh, this time. And then I have some comments on um, overall performance test scores. So there's those three areas. Um, okay. If people want to talk about these now, that's fine. If they want to just save it for later, that's fine too. Um, so I have four concerns with these goals, the way they're structured. Three of them all relate to the being multi-year goals. So I'm opposed to having any multi-year goal for a committee where every year that two of the six of us are on the ballot for, re for election or our seats are up on the ballot. Um, so we have three-year goals. I think we're in year two of three, if I'm right. Mm -hmm. um, I know that the committee can change those goals at any point. They have the power to do that. Um, but if, if we're going to have multi-year goals at a minimum, I would want to see clear indication of exactly what is to be accomplished at each of the years. Um, but as a general rule, I'm opposed to them categorically for, for these three reasons. The first is that um, each committee should be able to set the goals for uh, the superintendent for the year they're going to evaluate. And every year, there's the opportunity to have different members of the committee. So it's by, having, by coming into the committee, as, as some of us did, with the goals kind of preset by a prior committee, um, we're in the position of either having to change an expectation that the superintendent has been given based on a multi-year goal, right, which we can do, but that seems unfair to the superintendent. Uh, or we can go with the flow and just keep the goals and, and not have as much of a hand in crafting them as we otherwise would. Uh, so I see it as a reach forward by a committee into future committee's affairs that I don't think we have the, should be able to do. Uh, we can, but I don't think we should. Um, secondly, circumstances change. I mean, since these goals were passed, we had a number of budget cuts. We had a failed override. We had a successful override. There's been real changes in our budgetary circumstances as a committee since these goals were put on paper. And I think if you, anytime you do multi-year goals, you're, um, you're beholden to somewhat unforeseeable and unknowable circumstances. You know, I think want to draft goals with the idea of taking into account the circumstances of the district, financial and otherwise, when you make the goals. Um, third, uh, I think when you, you create a, a a temptation to kick the can down the road when you have a multi-year goal. So if you have a three-year goal and, I don't know, you know, a quarter of it gets done in the first year, you can say, well, we'll make it up next year. Or um, you know, until that final year, you, you always have the ability to say, well, you know, we'll get to it next year. And then you can end up getting to that last year and having so much to do that it's not realistic to get it all done. So it can so be self-frustrating. Can I ask you a question? Of course. So, what, so there are or some things that that would be couldn't do in a year, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, so how do we this? How do we? How would we address that within another another mechanism? Or what are your thoughts on that? I would just re-up the goal year over year. You okay. just rewrite it. So I mean, so, so let me give an example, yeah. and then we can go into other comments. But um, so if if your goal is, I think that every goal should be specific, measurable, actionable. Um, you know, smart goals. I forget what the R is for. Realistic. 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 Very good. My point about circumstances. Well, they are time bound. You have three years to yeah. do them, so I really can't mm -hmm. worry about the T. But the SMA and SMA is what I'm worried about. The R, um, you know, I think year by year you, you can make better goals. So I would say, so let's say you have a goal of improving elementary school uh, literacy assessments. You could set a goal the first year if we want 100% Fontes Pinnell evaluation in all our elementary schools by the end of this year. Depending on what those results look like, you can then set a goal that's appropriate for we want this, we have this percent on this evaluation this year among our elementary school students. We want it to be this, this much higher in one year. And then if you achieve some of that, but not all of it, to your point, then you said we want it to be this much higher, or we want it to be the same or not go down. So I, I think you, you can just recapitulate the goals as you need to and update them with more and realistic you just give levels benchmarks. Of the, levels of completion in each year. Uh, isn't that kind of? You would just have a, a smaller. Um, scope and and but you would always have to have a specific and measurable outcome i struggle to see specific measurable outcomes in the yeah. professional practice student learning and district improvement goals that we had to evaluate on i think they're, they're highly subjective process driven and it was you know I, I had to take them as they were when i felt filled out my evaluation and i was faithful to the wording of the goal but i had some strong disagreements with this committee and how they were worded yes mm -hmm. so uh, i think that the smart goals are a good idea i just would there are many things that it there is a longer term like there's no curriculum implementation that gets done in one year right like so the no atom implementation right we that's structured as three years so I think we have to be cognizant that there are things 
um, that are going to span longer time periods and we need to establish what those goals are you know, within each, say, year period or evaluation cycle. So I agree with that, but I'm very, you know, and I think these, the goals are structured that way. That's part of the superintendent process for the state. So um, we would want to, I think, look at it um, very carefully if we're departing from um, the standards for the state. And I also just really, I, it concerns me that we, you know, we are elected political appointees <coughs> As you point out, we can change to you know every year, um, and you want to make sure that again that if there's long-term goals, we continue we can achieve those as a district, and not have the case where you know one committee we do this and we don't make any progress because different committees have different perspectives, and we don't as a district achieve the longer-term goals. So I think we just need to you know to balance that, and also the. Um, you know, one of the, I know that many other committees, and actually Mrs. Van Den Ecker sort of executed this this year, many committees, um, unless you are on the board when the goals are set and part of that, you know, that uh, goal setting meeting, they don't do the evaluation. I think this year Mrs. Van Den Ecker chose not to do the rating, but did give the narrative and gave the feedback, which, you know, from her time on the committee, which started in December, I think, right? Yeah. So, I was appointed um, in December. So it is a, a much more difficult position when you come into the board and it's been after the goals were set. So I, th I think it's a, a dialogue that something for us to keep in mind as we set the goals for next next year. Sparowski. Yeah, I want to thank you for bringing that to us. It's it's an interesting point, and I'm kind of processing. I don't have an immediate reaction. I'm going to think about it a little bit. There is one sort of caution I would have if we went down the road of discussing this, and it would be. Um, I'd be a tiny bit worried that if the goals became too specific, they'd become too narrow for a position that's really a CEO level position. And it's probably just nitpicking the example, but like Fontes and Pinnell implementation of benchmarks at all the elementary, that to me feels like a principal goal. Principal, as part of your job this year, we need this assessment done at these grade levels. That doesn't feel like a superintendent goal to me. So um, you probably have other examples that I may be more comfortable with, but that would be the one thing that his, I would want to see goals that were broad and district-wide and systemic and not too narrow. Mm -hmm. But I think some of your other points are really good. I'm going to think about them. Did you have some? Sure. Yeah. Um, I, I kind of see, I think I'm in between some of these positions in that I, I agree that you, taking up something like literacy instruction, that has to be a multi-year goal. It has to be more than three years. But um, I also do agree that the action steps can be specific. And in fact, even in the superintendent evaluation forms from the state, they say SMART goals, and they give some examples of very specific kinds of goals. So um, I think that perhaps the goal might span for several years, but the action steps year by year could be more specific, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Is that, does that get at any of what you were? Thinking, Mr. Yes. Mm -hmm. I just want to let everyone talk, though. Mm -hmm. I can respond. I just want to thank you. I, I yes. find it helpful to think critically about the process. Mm -hmm. um, I actually like that it's a three year because that allows for those other circumstances that we can't anticipate to enter in and not derail the goals. Mm -hmm. Um, and it is education, not sales. So it's very hard to say, well, sales went up, sales went, went down. You can't really, doing the quantitative analysis is different in education. We had changes in standardized testing. Couldn't really compare them between years. It, there are a lot of challenges that way. I love that we have the chance for the narrative, and I'm in awe that Mrs. Borowski could, could reduce it to what she did in such a powerful way, not my forte. Um, but the narrative is a really important part of it. Where I had problems with the evaluation was the lumping in the professional practice. There were like six things in the list. and. I often found that five out of those six I would have given an exemplary to or a, a proficient for, and then I'd see the one that gave me trouble and I wouldn't, it, in my narrative I could separate it out, but I couldn't separate it out in my um, rating. And so that was very challenging to me. Um, but the three-year span, it's sort of like development with children also. You know, 
they develop at different rates. We get information that tells us where the superintendent is in the goal, like we do with the school improvement plans, where they say X has been done, Y has been done, Z hasn't been done. And I find that really helpful. Okay. Thank else? you. You can respond. Yeah. Did you have something else? You, may, I, um, may I add something to what you said, or shall I? Um, sure. Or do you want to go now, Nick? Go ahead. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, you know, paradoxically, the goal that would seem the hardest to measure in a smart way, the social emotional, is the one that was written in the most kind of smart, tip, you know, stereotypically smart way with, with specific steps. That's interesting. Um, I'm an English professor, so I'm not huge on data and numbers. I think I'm in, I believe in data informed, not data driven. But um, even looking at these, it, you know, it's outcome based. Um, what is the at the end of three years, and then move backwards? And there are ways to be specific without locking yourself in or turning people into robots. I think um, not turning teachers into robots, kids into robots, and responding to the changing conditions. So. I, I do feel like we can find ways to be flexible yet specific, personally. Yes, Nick. Do you have anything? No. Nobody recognizes you. <laughs> we covered it all. <laughs> okay. No, I want to thank the committee. I wanted to hear everybody's um, thoughts, and I appreciate it. I started that. it by <laughs> saying, asking about the three years versus one year. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Uh, I want to thank the committee members. I, I think there's a difference. So listening to your perspectives, I mean, I think there's a difference between a vision, priorities, and a mission statement versus goals. Uh, I still, and nothing I've heard would, would change my view that as a committee we should be, we're, we're called on to, by law to, to evaluate uh, on an annual cycle. And so I think that if, if we do want to retain a multi-year approach, I'd like to see uh, some more specific benchmarks, guideposts, what have you, that are objective for the superintendent's benefit, the public's benefit, as, as well as our own, right? That when we um, you know, look, go to the process of independently evaluating based on a set of written goals, I'd like there to be more uh, specific benchmarks that we expect each year and we can all align around our, our views on whether those were achieved. The math curriculum uh, that was brought up um, Ms. Webb, in your comments, was a good example, I think, of how we've approached a multi-year goal in one-year increments. So we've multiple times gone to the voters and asked for separate tranches, three separate tranches of 150K each. Uh, science. I'm science, I'm sorry, so, thank no you. Adam. Yeah. No Adam was science, I misspoke, mm -hmm. but the science curriculum. So that's an example of it's a three-year curriculum update, and we broke it down into three pieces, and we implemented them in three individual pieces. And, and we were accountable with you know, Ms. Dowd to provide the public with, you did a remarkable job, you were within a couple pennies. <laughs> I think she, to the penny she had uh, an accountability of exactly how that taxpayer money was spent. So it's doable, and that's an excellent example of how we've done it. And what I'm asking is to take the same approach, not always monetary, but the same approach to all of our evaluations. And I think, for me, I would have a lot more comfort participating in the process if, uh, if the annual benchmarks were a little more clear and agreed upon. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, second area of yeah. <laughs> comments. Um, just areas that I'd, I'd like more info personally, um, but I don't know that it's available. Um, I'd like to know, I know that we're starting a, a pride survey. I'd, I'd really like to look at periodically obtaining data about for, for teachers and staff, how do we find out how, how they view how well they're resourced? And, and we talk in this committee a lot about you know, budget. We talk about um, you know, resources that you know, we have to trade against each other in, 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 our, in our budget deliberation in January and February. We have what I view as sporadic information on the effectiveness of teacher training and professional development. Um, I'd like to know more, for instance, when we collapse the levels, SCP, CP in the high school and, and elementary schools, or I'm sorry, middle schools, you know, do we have the right kind of support for differentiated instruction for those students? And, and how do we assess whether it's the right support? I'd, I'd like to, in some kind of a systematic way, hear, hear feedback from the people doing the work with our students. We have 500, 550 FTE uh, employed in our district toward you know, student learning. Uh, that's a wealth of knowledge and wisdom that I think at a high level, if, if there was some way to um, get feedback in a way that was, you know, 
legally appropriate and anonymous and, and kind of organized in a way that we could um, provide both the superintendent with a resource and us with some guidance. I, I would appreciate it. Um, so now our teachers spread too thin. You know, I asked myself that question. Um, so I'd, I'd, I'd like some feedback on that to the extent we don't already have it. Dr. Doherty, you had your hand up. I was just going to say the Pride Survey has questions around that. Which it's is excellent. The, it's part of the school climate. So, uh, so we look, I look forward to, to seeing that. Um, last, last question, last sure. topic. Um, it's just uh, test scores, right? So my, my concern, um, you know, I've highlighted in my evaluation is, is, you know, on the one hand, there's a, a situation that we have focused on quite a while with one of our elementary schools where a subpopulation tested in a certain way for four consecutive years several years ago. Um, in addition to that, when you look at all of our elementary schools, I see a difference between how different populations in our schools perform on these tests compared to the peer communities we've chosen. I highlighted that in my evaluation. I also see a difference between how Reading students are performing now on the tests that they take, and I know we've had three tests in three years, right? We had MCAS 1, PARC, and then MCAS 2. You can't compare them to each other. Right. Um, and, I, and I'm absolutely not saying that the test scores are the, the focal point or should be a, a, a focal point of that, that detracts from looking for what's best for students overall. I'm supportive of the MTSS process of providing level two and three supports. But we don't talk a lot about test scores in this committee. And, and I, I don't want to miss that as a component of what we are assessed on, whether we like them or not. Um, they're, they're a fact of life. They're legally required. Uh, and I wonder why, why do our students perform a certain way relative to their peers today in 2018? And when we look at the same grade levels five and 10 years ago, I often see differences, and, and sometimes not, often you know, unfavorable differences. And I wonder when I see that, you know, I, and I don't know why that is, but I do see that, you know, we've been talking about curriculum and pacing charts and implementing curriculum for quite some time here. And I have to wonder whether our students are being taught the same thing at the same pace that other students are being taught in other places within the state. I don't know the answer. But we're investing a lot as a committee and as a town. We've hired a new assistant superintendent. We have invested an additional 150K of override money into curriculum. Uh, and then we have a number of curriculum items in our budget every year. So we're investing a great deal in curriculum to make sure our students are getting the best possible education, education that's aligned with how you know, the state chooses to assess them in part. So I want to make sure that we have agenda topics as a committee that creates an environment where we can have a conversation with our administrators and with our principals and administrators about you know, how's it going? Do you have the resources you need? Are we, uh, are we um, on track? What is our goal? And that, I would love to see that as a SMART goal. But I think that if this committee chooses to look at something, uh, I think we have the ability to influence how, what people prioritize in part. And so I want to use that function of our committee to look at curriculum in the upcoming year. I think that's very important. So those are my comments. Thank you for your patience. Thank you. Anyone from, did you have any? No. I don't have any specific questions, but I did want to thank the, the committee for their their work and, uh, and all of their comments and, and the narratives that it was an evaluation. And I agree with the, the comments here to make up the double budgets to work against the, the headwinds in social media. Uh, definitely a challenging year, and I look forward to next year when we don't have the budget processes making some progress on some things that have been persistent problems, um, at least persistent comp complaints um, about certain areas in the district. So look forward to things next year. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, ready? Sure, absolutely. <laughs> I just wanted to follow up on what Nick said. Um, I appreciate the idea of focusing a little bit on uh, some energy on test scores because um, something that's been bothering me is the goal of closing the achievement gap because you can do that by bringing everyone down but bringing the high needs subgroup down less. That reduces the achievement gap, but not in a way that anyone would want. So what we want to be doing is raising achievement for all. Um, that was one comment. And the other comment I had related to the multi-year goals in curriculum is could we say that in this one year we are going to accomplish, we're going to have published 
math curriculum maps for and pacing guides for grades X to Y, and that's a measurable goal, and you either meet it or you don't. Just thoughts. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. We have, uh, we have the motion. Yep, the motion is actually on the table and it's been seconded to approve the superintendent and the cycle summative evaluation report for 2017 2018. We already seconded. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? 6 0. Thank you. Um, so, we are now uh, going. Go ahead, you can read yep. this. Uh, so we are going to be moving into executive session to protect the bargaining position of the board. We will move into executive session to discuss strategies with respect to collective bargaining and non-represented personnel, specifically superintendents, contracts, and compensation, and the approval of minutes. And we will return to open session at, um, well, I'm going to say uh, 9 o'clock. We, we, at approximately 9 o'clock, we would plan to return to open session. This requires a roll call vote. Yes. 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 Thank you. patience uh, went longer than we had indicated when we went into executive session so uh, the committee has uh, voted uh, a salary uh, for the superintendent uh, for the uh, 2000 uh, fiscal year beginning uh, June 30th 2018 to 19 that right? July 1st. July, July 1st. 1st. Sorry. I'll make the uh, yeah. motion. Move to approve the superintendent's salary increase of 2%, which is an annual amount of 186728 for the 2018-19 school year. Is there a second? second? Any discussion? Oh. Any other motions? No. Okay. No motion to adjourn. Um, we have to vote. Do we, we have to vote? Or you have to vote. Close? We have to vote. Uh, we just. Oh. We have to actually do the vote in public. With hands. Or mm -hmm. Roll call. Oh, I thought we. Yeah. We, is that is that correct, or are we yeah, just reporting? Yeah, we do. You, you have to vote yeah. in public session. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, All those. In favor? Any other discussion? No. All those in favor. Four opposed. Two. Um, motion to adjourn. Is there second. a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Opposed. <laughs> I'm tempted to vote no.